Hey everybody, Master Pam here, and today we have our truth or dare challenge for myself. So some of you guys submitted your truth or dare, and the way you play truth or dare is you submit your truth and your dare question, and that I get to choose just one of them. But I think for today's sake, I'm going to try to do both of them. So whatever truth or dare you sent in to me, I will try to do both of them for you, and hopefully we make this as entertaining as we can. So let's see, the first question that came in is from Tommy Dalton, and he wants to know, his dare is, can I do 60 roundhouse kicks in 60 seconds? I think I can. Um, I could do both legs, I guess, running in place, which would be really fast, um, or I'll just do one leg for you, uh, 60 kicks within 60 seconds. I'll do the one leg for today, because I'll be honest, my back is killing me. My lower back, I'm having some issues lately. So the constant twisting is really going to put some more damage to me. But I will do the one-legged 60 roundhouse kicks in one minute just for you, Tommy Dalton. So here we go. Let me grab my clock. I got my bag here for you. Let's see. Are we ready? Get set and go. One. All right, Tommy, I did 60 in 34 seconds just for you. So thank you for submitting that dare. I don't really mean it, but I do thank you. And let's see. Whew. I'm out of breath. Your truth. Do I know every kick in the world? I do not. There are... Many kicks out there from many different styles. I think I know most of the Taekwondo kicks, but I'm not gonna claim that I know all the kicks. I know the most important ones. Alrighty, Tommy, thank you for submitting. Next, let's see. We have from Brandon Rykowski, his Let's see, his truth question, what is your middle name? It's Justin, Justin, uh, Michael Justin. So whenever I hear my mom yell, Michael Justin, whoo, I knew to hide. I'm just kidding, I went right to my mom, but I knew I was in trouble. All right, let's see, his dare, he wants to see me break how many boards I can in one minute. Um, I wish I could. We don't have holders here, so I am not sure. But from the Karate Kid movie, I think Mr. Miyagi said, I don't know, boards don't fight back, or something like that. So I'm not sure how many boards I can do in one minute. I'm sure I could do quite a bit though. All right, let's see, from his brother, Kyle. His truth question is, how do I remember all the Taekwondo words? Pretty simple, Kyle, it's from practice. Anything you do in life, you gotta practice, you have to use it every day. So anyone taking a foreign language, you gotta use the words that you're being taught every single day. Um, no matter what, whether it's educational, whether it's motivational, whether it's one of our life lessons, like this month, humility, you have to use whatever you're learning every day. If you don't use it, you, parents, you know this one, you lose it. So especially physical. So a great example is as I get older, I have to stay active. Uh, my flexibility, of course, has gone down a little bit. My speed has dropped tremendously <laughs> um, back when I was 20, 25, but, if I don't use it at all, I lose everything. And I've worked too hard to lose everything. 
I still jog one to two miles every couple days. I've been doing the Peloton, the elliptical push-ups, sit-ups. So a good lesson here, Kyle, is just use the things you're learning every day and it helps you remember it. So that was a long answer just based on how do I remember the Taekwondo words, but there's a lesson for you. Kyle's dare is to hold your foot as close to your head as possible for one minute without falling over. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, if I could do this, I'm not sure I'm sitting. I could try standing. I'll hold my foot up for a minute. Let's see how that goes. I'll move my chair, start my clock, and go. I'll hold it up. Let's see if I could do this for one minute. I mean, this is as high as to my head as I could go, but let's see if I could just do the challenge of pretty much standing on woo, one foot for a minute. Well, let's see, we're at 20 seconds. All right. Woo, I'm doing this for you, Kyle Rykowski. One minute, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, I lost my focus there. We're at 33 seconds. I gotta hop around a little bit. But I'm still here, I'm back. Oh boy, here we go Kyle, we're at 45 seconds. I'll count down the last 10 seconds for you. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. There you go Kyle, one minute. I stood on one foot, held my foot up as high as I can for you, Kyle. So great question so far, you guys. Let's see. This is from Leah Heimick. Her truth. What was the funniest thing ever happened in a karate class? Oh my God. Leah, I got many stories. I mean, I got so many I can't even remember. I can remember once at when I used to teach when I was much younger at another school, there was a little boy, Joey, little chubby kid, five years old, and they were doing H form. So for those of you that know H form, you say key up, you spin around, and the form really repeats itself two times and then the form is over. This little boy, he couldn't say key up, he would say chia, and uh, little Korean boy, and he never ended. The form just kept going on and on. He never ended after two times. And me and a friend of mine were sitting there and we, we didn't stop him. We, we let him go. And I think he was doing the form close to three, four, five minutes before we, we said something. We were just hysterical. But that's one. Uh, um, and then I have just lots of memories because first of all, I love what I do. I love being here in classes. I crack jokes all the time. Um, you know, I think you guys know that. I'll joke around with you guys, tease some of you all in good fun. Uh, but I just like to have fun. I surround myself with awesome staff members that are similar to myself throughout all the years. I mean, there hasn't been one staff member that I haven't, I haven't liked. You know, I, I love just being here and surrounding myself with good, happy people, students, parents, and staff. Um, as far as other stories, whew, I got a bunch. We had a boy here with his sister and they were grappling and he started to cry a little bit. Teenager. Um, and I think he was embarrassed. So he said he had sweat in his eye. I have sweat in my eye. That's always a funny one between me and his sister. We always laugh. I remember Mr. John was backing up in our kickboxing class. Someone knocked over one of these bags and he didn't know it. He's walking backwards and he... He toppled right over that. Um, whew, so many things, let's see. Just talking to staff sometimes, talking to the teenagers. We had one teenager here working one time and he took a field trip to the Wax Museum in New York City. And he's like, oh, I gotta go on this field trip tomorrow. We're going to the Wax Museum. What are those things made out of, clay? And yeah, it was interesting. Uh, um, so I always, I always love my teenage stories uh, with my teenagers. They're, they're hysterical. Um, but again, so many stories throughout all these years, 27 years of teaching classes, figure about 
25 classes a week, 1,000 classes a year, maybe 27, 30,000 classes at a minimum that I've, I've taught. So I just have a great time here. Every class is a, a good moment. All right, Leah's challenge, her dare, 100 push-ups. Whew, I don't know if I could do 100. I just did 50 for a friend of mine. I could do them, but I'm going to take breaks if you don't mind. I'll do 100 push-ups for you, Leah. You know why? Because I'm doing it for Leah. Leah's awesome. She works hard all the time. And I'm going to demonstrate that even if I can't do 100 push-ups, I'm going to give it my best with the yes, I can attitude, and I'm never going to quit. So I'll start here, and I'll do 100 for you, Leah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy. Woo, so far that's 70, Leah. I got 30 more to go. I'm tired from those kicks. But all right, let's go. Let's see if we can finish the rest. That was 70. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 80. Woo, the arms start to get heavy. I have not been working out like I should be. I've been doing a little each day, this quarantine. You gotta keep pushing every day though. Stay active. Let's go, that's 80. 20 more for you, Leah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 90. 10 more, Leah. Here we go. Come on, never quit attitude, right? Whew. I remember when I could do 100 in a row. Let's go, last 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one more. One. There we go, Leah. There's your 100 push ups. Just for you, Leah. All right, let me fix my camera. Whew. I'm working hard here just to entertain you guys. All right, so that's Leah. Next. Next dare from Cameron D'Agostino. I love Cameron. I love all you guys. You guys are awesome. His dare is run a six-minute mile. There's no way to run a six-minute mile for you guys to follow me. But I'll be honest. I can't run a six-minute mile. Two summers ago, I was running a lot, and I was pushing myself. At age 48 years old, I ran a six minute, 17 second mile. That was my best. I was probably averaging six and a half minutes that summer. Um, this year, last week, I ran a seven, low sevens. You know, um, I'll get back to seven. My goal is every Friday I run one minute sprint and it's to run a seven minute mile. So right now I'm a little bit off of it. But in a couple of weeks of getting repetition, I'll get back to my seven minute mile. But Cameron, six minute mile <laughs> isn't happening. All right, let's see. And his truth, can I pass the black belt test now? Yes, I can. Um, I know all the curriculum. I wrote it. <laughs> I know the curriculum. Physically, I, I could do the three miles. I could do the one mile in under eight minutes all the push-ups, sit-ups, I could do it. I'll struggle, because I designed that test to make it difficult for everybody. I want you to work hard and feel challenged. I don't care how great a shape you win, that test is designed to be challenging. All right, let's see, thank you, Cameron. And last, we have from, who is this from, I forget. Hmm, I'm not sure. 
But let's see. Did you start martial arts because you were bullied in school? Uh, no, I always loved martial arts. Uh, I have a very long story, and I'm not gonna not gonna go too far into it. But my brother did martial arts first, and at the time, my parents couldn't afford to pay for both of us to do it, so he did it first for a year. He ended up stopping, and then I think around 14, 15 years old, I started martial arts. I did it for the first year, and I stuck with it. My parents saw I was committed to it, and they paid for it for another year and a half, because it took me two and a half years to get the black belt. Um, which, oh, that's his second question. How long did it take? It took you two and a half years. It took me two and a half years. I would go to school. My high school was about a mile and a half away. I would go to school, and sometimes after school, I would walk to the Taekwondo school, or, at night, I had band practice, so after band practice, at, in the dark, I would walk down Hempstead Turnpike by the hospital over there, and I would walk about a mile, mile and a half to my Taekwondo class, and then my parents would either pick me up or I, I'd walk home. I was pretty committed, especially towards the end, getting close to black belt. I surrounded myself but with incredible Taekwondo athletes, an amazing Taekwondo coach, and uh, those days are forever ingrained in my head. I love them and I miss them. And I just want to give you guys that same experience. So it took me two and a half years. That's his truth. But um, one truth, oh, he has two truths. That's why. The other truth was, was I bully? No, I always wanted to do it. So after getting Black Bell, uh, my parents and, you know, they said, that's it. We're done. You got to Black Bell. If you want to continue, you have to pay for it yourself. And uh, I did. I went to work and at. 17, 18 years old, I think I was a black belt. Uh, I worked to pay for my membership so I could keep training. And eventually, within a year, I started working there. And the rest is history. But I didn't start it because I was bullied in school. But I think every one of us was a little bit bullied at some point. I, w I don't think I was really bullied amongst other people. But sometimes within your friends group, <laughs> you know, maybe a little bit here or there. Um, but that's not the reason why. I started, but I take bullying very serious, um, and that's why we're helping you guys. And the dare is a flying sidekick. I will do that for you, a flying sidekick. Are you ready? I have my bag out for you. I'll do one flying sidekick for you. I'm not sure who this is from. You know what? If you give me one second, I'm going to find out who this is from because I want to give you credit. I want to give you credit for this. Let's see. Oh, wait. I'm back. Let me make sure. I'm going to find out who this is. Give me 30 seconds. I'm sorry, that was from Ryan Khan. Ryan, I apologize. All right, um, but you asked for a flying sidekick, there's the bag. And I'll just do a, a nice little flying sidekick for you, just for a little fun. Here we go, you guys ready? And Ryan, there's your flying sidekick. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed our truth or dare. This went a little longer than I expected. I hope you stayed the entire time and watched it. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way you get to watch more videos of this. Um, and just stay tuned for more adventures at MPBBC.